Learning Objectives After completing this module, learners will be able to understand the terms of budget constraint and budget set. Learn how the absolute value of the slope of the budget line can be measured in the aspect of substitution between two goods. Learn about the horizontal and vertical intercepts in the budget line. Learn the interrelation between income increasing and quantity of the goods that the consumer prefers to buy. Learn how by the changes in the price changes, the budget lines become steeper and flatter with pivotal shifts inward and outward of the vertical intercepts. Learn consumer ranks her preferences in the bundle sets. Learn about monotonic preferences of the consumer. Learn about the rate of substitution and the diminishing rate of substitution. Learn the interrelation between the slope of the indifference curve and the rate of substitution. Learn what the monotonicity of preferences implies in respect of indifference curve. Understand about the concept of marginal rate of substitution. Learn about the utility representation and utility functions of the consumer's preferences. Understand that the most preferred bundle of the consumer would be on the budget line. Learn that how the optimum bundle is located on the budget line at the point where the budget line is tangent to an indifference curve. Learn that the graphical representation of the demand function is called the demand curve. Learn that how the substitution and income effects act on the demands of the goods when the price and the income of the consumer changes. Learn how for normal and inferior goods the demand rule behaves. Learn how the market demand is calculated. The Consumer's Budget Budget Set a budget set refers to all the consumption bundles that a consumer can buy given his money income and price of the goods. It is constrained by the budget line. The budget set is also known as budget constraint as it shows the limit constrained up to which the consumer can buy a set of two goods with his given income. So in the prevailing market prices, all those bundles the consumer can afford to buy given his income and prices of the goods, are included in the budget set. Budget Line The slope of budget line in the graphical interpretation calculates the amount of change in the second goods as required per unit in the respect of the first goods changes along the budget line. When the consumer wants to substitute one goods or the portion for another goods, she needs to give up the proportion of first goods unit price and the second goods unit price. When a point represents a bundle which would cost lesser than the consumer's income, then consumer would spend the additional money in the bundle which contains more than other goods and at least not less of the other. Changes in the budget set If the income of the consumer increases, the vertical intercept increases and a parallel outward shift in the budget line, which can be observed during the changes in the set of available bundles as opted by the consumer when the income has changed, but the price level of the goods is unchanged. Thus, any point beyond the budget line shows a non-attainable combination. At the time when the price of one goods increases, the absolute value of the slope of the budget line also increases and then the steeper budget line appears. That is, then it shows pivotal inwards around the vertical intercept. Preferences of the consumer It is assumed that the consumer chooses her consumption bundle on the basis of her tastes and preferences over the bundles in the budget set. It is generally assumed that the consumer has a well-defined preferences to the set of all possible bundles. She can compare any two bundles. Monotonic preferences In economics, consumers are thought to choose her consumption as per each of their preferences and for every possible good and bundle. The well-defined preferences are always there. That is, the preference is to arrange the products as per the ranks or being indifferent to each and every of them. 
Among two bundles, consumer always prefers the one which has at least one more than the other and at least no less of the other. This is monotonic preference. Substitution rates between two goods. The rate of substitution is that amount of the second good where one less amount is available, which consumer wants to leave in order to have the extra unit in the first good. Diminishing rate of substitution and the indifference curve. When consumer will start to get more and more in first good in comparison with second good, the rate of substitution between these two goods will start to diminish. These types of preferences in graphical plotting appear like convex preferences. An indifference curve is interconnector of all such bundles which consumers think indifferent in respect of each other. Indifference curves do not get any straight line. As for most goods, the marginal rate of substitution, that is, the rate at which the consumers are willing to leave one good in exchange for more of the other good, is not constant. The preference of monotonicity depicts that any point laying above the indifference curve is going to show the bundle which is preferred to the bundles on the indifference curve as well. Similarly, the point staying below of the indifference curve depicts the inferior bundle to those on the indifference curve. Shape of indifference curve and utility, rate of substitution and the slope of indifference curve. For minute change, the absolute value of the slope in the indifference curve at any point calculates the rate of the substitution of the consumer preference at that specific point. This is called the marginal rate of substitution, MRS. When the preference is monotonic, the increased amount of the first good along the indifference curve is responsible for the decrease in the amount of the second good. That is the reason why the slope of the indifference curve is negative. In other words, we can say that the preference monotonicity reflects in the downward inclination of the indifference curve. Indifference map. The points, those are depicted in the indifference curve, are considered in the same family in respect of the choices of the consumer. The monotonicity of the preferences signifies that between any two indifference curves, the bundles which are lying above are more preferred than those bundles on the curve which are lying below in the respect of the other. Utility representations and utility functions. The indifferent bundles in respect of the choices of the consumer should have the same ranking and consequently the preferred ones should be assigned with the higher rankings. This depicts the utilities of the bundles and the way they are represented are the utility representations by the aid of utility functions. In this way, the preferred bundle gets the higher utility number in comparison with the less preferred or less amount containing bundle. But it is also very important to remember that the same preferences may have different utility representations as the utility numbers are only used to indicate the preferences. Optimal choice of the consumer. Preference of the consumer and the optimum point of preference. In economics, it is regarded that as rational being, the consumers know which bundles of goods should be appropriate for them and thus their preferences have been formed. The concern lies there where the consumers have to move to that point marked with highest possible indifference curve as given in a budget set. If we can compare a point below the budget line, there must be some point where consumer can get at least one of the goods more and thus the consumer with monotonic preferences opts that. It cannot be possible above the budget line. Thus, the optimum bundle that a consumer can opt is always on the budget line. Equality of marginal rate of substitution and the ratio of prices. The optimum goods which is opted by the consumer is located at the point where one of the indifference curves touches tangentially the budget line. That is, the absolute value of the indifference slope and the price ratio becomes the same, the point. We know that the curve's slope depicts the rate 
at which the consumer substitutes one good for the other. In brief, the price ratio greater than the marginal ratio of preference can't be the optimum. Problem of choices. In some cases, it is argued that the consumer's optimum choice lying on the point if she spends her whole money on one good only in a day. The budget set is considered the feasible set which the consumer can opt and the different bundles of two goods are given in the respective market rates like the alternatives. Demand and Demand Curves The function in the demand curve The amount of the goods the consumer buys always depends on the price of the good. The prices of the other goods the consumer's income and her taste and choices. The demand function of a consumer shows the amount of goods that the consumer chooses in accordance with different price levels when other factors remain unchanged. Substitution effect, law of demand, linear demand and normal, inferior and complementary goods. When the consumer intends to adjust in buying the bundles that she bought before the price change, is called the substitution effect. Here, due to price change and the income of the consumer, as adjusted than before, the optimal quantity of the goods also changes. The law of demand describes that the consumer's demand always inversely related with the price of good. A linear demand curve can measure the rate at which the demand alters by the unit price change of the goods. The normal good follows the general rule that the quantity of the goods changes in direct way by the effect of income changes of the consumer. But for the inferior goods, the consumer tries to choose less when her income level increases. The complementary goods are related with each other in a way that once price increase reduces the demand of other. But the substitute's goods follows the opposite rule. Shifts in the demand curve and the movements along the demand curve. The increase in price of a substitute good, the demand curve moves towards right direction. But for the complementary good, the demand curve shifts leftward. As long as the demand curve is a graphical representation of the demand function due to any change in price, we can see the movements along the demand curve. Market demand. Derivation of market demand curve and addition of two linear demand curves. By adding the individual demands, the market demand can be calculated. For market demand curve, we follow the horizontal summation process, where individual demand curves are added as they are shown horizontally when they are graphically plotted. At different price level, when we can see individuals' demand is zero, then we can add their demands in linear level and find the market demands in the brackets of the prices where they have the common phase. Elasticity of demand and the constantly elastic demand curves. The price elasticity of demand is a proportion and thus has no units. It depicts the fraction of percentile changes in demand being divided by the percentile changes in the price. When we see the percent change in a demand of goods is less, than the person change in price, the goods regarded in elastic in that specific price. When it is equal, the good is said as unitary elastic, and when the demand changes, percentage is greater than the price change percentage, then the good is elastic in that price. The different price elasticity of demands in different points can be shown through a linear demand curve. Sometimes, the demand curve can show such situation where elasticity demand stays constant for every time. For which demand curve, the price change does not alter the rate of demand. The absolute value of the price elasticity there equals to zero. Thus, we can find that the vertical demand curve becomes absolutely inelastic. Geometrically measured elasticity along a linear demand curve. By the properties of similar triangles in geometry, the elasticity of demand curves can be measured and proved. The elasticity is zero at the point where the demand curve meets the horizontal axis of the graph and it becomes infinity at the point where it meets the vertical axis. 
Factors Determining Price Elasticity of the Demands Elasticity of Demand on the Nature of the Goods The price elasticity of the demand sometimes depends on the nature of the goods and the accessibility of some nearly closed substitutes of that good for food items as being utmost necessary for livelihood. The increases in the prices do not alter its demand in the same level. But the luxury items exactly follow the nature. That is, the price hikes necessarily reduces their demands. Thus, daily used commodities appear to be inelastic. But the luxury and other goods appear more price elastic in their nature. Elasticity and Expenditure The expenditure on the product will go down when the percentile reduction in the quantity to be bought is greater than the percentile increase in the price range. In its opposite scenario, the expenditure will increase. While the percentile decline in quantity becomes equal, with percentile increase in price, the expenditure remains constant from the perspective of the consumer. On the other hand, the percentile increase in quantity becomes greater than the percentile decrease in price range. The expenditure is caused to grow. The opposite happens when the expenditure on the good of the consumer goes down. When the percentile increase in quantity is greater than the percentile change in price, the good is called price elastic. The expenditure on the good will change in the same direction by the rate of price changes only when the percentile change in quantity is lesser than the percentile change in price. The expenditure then stays constant there. Demand curve and rectangular hyperbola. When the demand curve shapes like a rectangular hyperbola, it becomes a downward sloping curve. Here at any two points on the curve, the areas of two formed rectangles with vertical y-axis of the graph become same. There the price and quantities product becomes constant. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. At the prevailing market prices, what a consumer can buy with her income source. Those bundled set of goods create the budget set. The budget line is a negative sloping curve, which represents all bundles that cost the consumer her entire income. The consumer has well-defined preferences over the collection of all possible bundles of goods. She can rank the available bundles according to her preferences over them. An indifference curve is a locus of all points representing bundles among which the consumer is indifferent. Monotonicity of preferences implies that the indifference curve is downward sloping. In general, an indifference map or a utility function can represent the consumer's preferences. A rational consumer always chooses her most preferred bundle from the budget set. The consumer's optimum bundle is located at the point of tangency between the budget line and an indifference curve. The consumer's demand curve gives the amount of the good that a consumer chooses at different levels of its price. When the price of other goods, the consumer's income and her tastes and preferences remain unchanged. The demand for normal good increases, decreases, with increase, decrease in the consumer's income. The demand for inferior good decreases, increases, as the income of the consumer increases, decreases. The market demand curve represents the demand of all consumers in the market taken together at different levels of the price of the good. The elasticity of demand is a pure number.